major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Green Mountain Support Services of Vermont, Washington County Mental Health, Ale Israel. Food sponsors for Ableton On Air include Geffen Foods Israel, Osem Foods Israel. Major media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Hello and welcome to this edition of Able Done On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able in Vermont and beyond. I've always been your host, Lauren Seiler, and Arlene's here today. Say hi, Arlene. Okay, how you doing today? Very good, very good. Okay, on today's program, we we focus. Um, while every other news outlet is do is showing the casket of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, um, today we're going to focus on the ability of her life, of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and what she did for the uh, special needs community. So. Uh, you know, let us just say condolences to the family of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and uh, let's get started with the show. So there is a wonderful website. Um, uh, you can go to www.accessiblesociety.org. That's A-C-C-E-S-S-I-B-L-E society.org and there's a wonderful website called the uh, the Center for Accessible for the Center for an Accessible Society Disability Issues Information for Journalists. So if a person with a disability or a person with many ability is a journalist like uh, ourselves like myself um, there's a website here that you can go to to get information. So, um, so let's talk about uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg's life and times and the abilities of her. So on today's program, we're going to talk about the ADA integration mandate in the Olmstead decision, and we're also going to talk about uh, what if you're a, um, and I don't like saying this word, but what if you're a prisoner in prison and you happen to have mental retardation or MR? What laws um, did, Ruth get, did Ruth Bader Ginsburg help you <coughs> uh, uh, with that? So let's uh, zoom to so let's zoom to um, June twenty second, nineteen ninety nine. Now remember, nine years before that. Um, July 26, 1990, they first started with the ADA, the Americans with Disabilities Act, signed by President um, George Bush Sr. But according to, uh, in Washington, D.C., June 22nd, 1999, um, was a huge decision, uh, and it was a mandate by the Supreme Court. Um, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg decided that with a, a whole lot of other judges, um, and I'll get to that in a minute. But, um, so, it says, June 22nd, 1999, in rejecting the state of, jo I'm reading it from here, um, and this is a really important um, website. In rejecting the state, Georgia's appeal to enforce institutionalization of individuals with disabilities. The Supreme Court, um, today, well, actually, June 22, 1999, affirmed the right of individuals with disabilities to live in their community in its 6 3 ruling against the state of Georgia in the case of Olmstead versus LC and EW. Okay. Under Title II, now this is extremely important for people with special needs in the audience who are watching today to understand. Under Title II, the federal, <clears throat> the federal Americans with Disabilities Act 
said that Judge Ruth Bader Ginsburg delivered an opinion to the court. And this is what she said. And we're quoting Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Um, States are required to place persons with mental disabilities or physical disabilities in settings rather than in institutions. When the state owns treatment um, of professionals have determined that community placement is appropriate. The transfer from institutional care to a less restrictive setting is not opposed by the affected individuals and the placement can be reasonably accommodated taking into account the resources available to the state and the needs of others with mental and physical disabilities. The integration mandate, in other words, uh, for example, back in the 1960s, um, people were trying to get integrated on buses, trains, on a you know, uh, different places, and Rosa Parks kind of helped with that. But in a sense, um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg really helped push um, services for people with disabilities. An integration mandate of the Americans with Disabilities Act requires public agencies to provide services in the most integrated setting appropriate to the needs of qualified individuals with disabilities. The High Court upheld that the mandate ruling in Georgia's Department of Human Resources and could not segregate two women with mental, re uh, with mental disabilities, mental or physical disabilities, in a state psychiatric hospital after the agency's long treatment of professionals have recommended their transfer to community care. In other words, um, everybody's mandated to have community integration. Um, yes, if you live in a group home or you live in a place um, that's not your parents' home, um, everybody deserves to be there. Anything you want to say regard, uh, regarding the integration and community resources for people with disabilities? In terms of Ruth Bader Ginsburg? Yes, Ruth Bader Ginsburg stood for women's rights, and she also did a variety of other things, but she remembered that she did a lot of things. She pushed, she pushed, she pushed, you know, she she spoke out, you know, she didn't want, she did with the law, but she, she, she pretty pushed, she was a pusher, but she, she was very She was pushed. known as the notorious, um, yeah. she was known as the notorious RBG, actually. Yeah, but um, was, uh, uh, a good Jewish woman who pushed and pushed and made sure that women got the rights that they deserve, you know. Mm -hmm. So let's, um, this is, um, you know, this is extremely important. The lower courts ruled that the state, that the state of Georgia violated the ADA's integration mandate, and Georgia appealed, claiming the rule could lead to the closing of all state hospitals and the disruption of state funding and services for people with mental and physical disabilities. However, the women were, however, women were supported by a number of states and disabilities organizations and others, okay? The unjustified segregation of people, with in, people in institutions and people with disabilities with community placement is appropriate, constitutes a form of discrimination prohibited by Title II of the ADA. And I'm going to repeat that again. When community, when community placement is appropriate and it constitutes a form of discrimination, it's prohibited by Title II of the ADA. Originally, 26 states had assigned unto an um, amicus brief <clears throat> support of Georgia's position. However, an extended an extensive education campaign by disability rights movement reduced the number 
to just seven. So let's go down here, and this is, um, um, you know, so the commissioner's brief was filed by 30 national and seven Georgia organizations that documented the cost of, differ of the differential between institutional and community care. So community care and institutional living are two entirely different things. Uh, as a matter of fact, going back to New York, uh, Willowbrook was one of the most infamous institutions. And people say that housing people with disabilities costs a lot of money, which it does. Um, so community costs and community housing, uh, according to this, cost $60,000 per year for a discharged psychiatric patient and $130,000 for institutional care. So it, um, it costs less for a person to be in, um, in, in, the community se uh, in the community setting uh, uh, versus the 130000 and that number probably jumped up because this was 1999. So, you know, Ruth Bader Ginsburg um, did extraordinary work um, for the field of disabilities in terms of the Olmstead Act. Now, let's go, now, this is going to take up the other part of the show, which is extremely important. Um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg... Um, I already took my temperature, Rob. Okay. Um, so Ruth Bader Ginsburg and the um, prisons of the Prisoner Act and people with disabilities. So let's take a look at that. Okay. While we go there, ah, uh, here we go. Ruth Bader Ginsburg um, basically turned around and said that if you are a person with um, mental retardation, um, no, well, all right, let's take a look at this quickly, and this is important. Um, she was a feminist icon, and she basically um, dealt with issues of prisoners' rights and capital punishment. And basically said that if you are a person with mental retardation, you cannot uh, be executed. But she was an extreme feminist. This is coming from... Um, the Marshall Project, which is uh, a nonprofit journalism um, newspaper for criminal justice. Um, she was an extreme uh, person with, um, you know, dealing with prisoner rights. Uh, now here's a, um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg on the rights of incarcerated um, individuals. When it came to prison conditions and the rights of incarcerated people, Justice Beta Ginsburg, uh, Justice Ginsburg simply wasn't as visible. And she wasn't the primary author of any blockbuster human rights and prison case. But according to the San Francisco, um, let me go up here. Don't rustle papers, please. I'm not rustling papers. RBG and mental retardation. It's going to cost me a little. And here we go. Ah. Uh,
Now, in terms of mental retardation and prison terms, it's illegal <coughs> to execute um, people with mental retardation because if a person has an IQ below 70, or uh, sorry, 70 to 75 or below, they're deemed, um, you know, their mind is deemed MR or, or pretty much um, disabled. Oh, can I say something? Yes. <laughs> this was because my mother told her. My mother told me that, told me to be a lady, and for her, <laughs> that meant your own person, be independent. I said in quality, <coughs> quality side of it, that it is essential to a woman's equality with a man that she be decision maker, that her choice be controlling. Women should only have true equality when men share with them the responsibility of bringing up the next generation. This, the state controlling a woman would mean denying her full immunity and full equality. Explain what you mean by that. That means that, um, I mean that, you know, person that don't let you control you because women need, you know, need need to be a decision made, but they, that, that, that she shouldn't be, have, have somebody control her or what decisions that she makes. Mm. Nobody should really control you on the decisions that you should make. So, according to New York Times, and I have it right here, the issue of execution and the retarded returns to the Supreme Court. This was filed April 27th, 2009. Okay, so um, it says, according to the New York Times in 2009, the issue before the court on, on that Monday should follow from the fact that uh, the Ohio courts of prosecutors <clears throat> said that an inmate, uh, his name is Michael Byes, was mentally retarded years before the Supreme Court barred the execution of retarded people in 2002. Atkins versus Virginia, okay? So, um, he was convicted of the kidnapping and attempted rape and murder of, of someone who happened to be a 10-year-old boy. A psychologist testified that Mr. Bice had an IQ of 69 and was mentally retarded <clears throat> on the conclusion of the appeals court in Ohio and that was accepted. So, um, going down to the article, um, you know, Rupert Ginsburg did a whole lot for people, and she really cared uh, for a lot of people. You know, um, she, it's well, not well, fair. Yeah, she, she did. She did the right thing. She thought out to get for women to get their rights and any any and and any other thing she did. She she always fought for this, she fought for that, but she really did a lot of stuff. Really and the court, the court added, um, in terms of stuff, the court added that uh, the person is not retarded or MR if the person's IQ is above 70. Right. So um, it, it just depends. Now, he, now here's the thing. Um... I don't like, and I'm sure you don't either, because this, this can be an opinion either way. Um, Trump isn't, isn't listening to the family, and it wasn't listening to uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg in the first place, because he's, he's, repla he's replacing, he wants to replace. He wants to replace, but it's too soon. It's way too soon. That's uh, what Chuck Schumer said. Senator Chuck Schumer, he said, no, you cannot replace her so soon, just wait. And he don't want to wait. He don't listen. He does what he wants. Yeah. And, and, and the way the president's office is going right now, he's going out the door. Um, you know, he doesn't care about people with special needs. He doesn't care about... Um, any services for people with disabilities? No, I mean, he might. Son, son is a special needs. He 
don't care. No, no. I mean, it, it, I mean, if we had it our way in terms of Democrats, um, Jeff, Je, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg probably would have been president by now. Yeah, or, or or something like that. She she needed to be on a higher uh, thing, you know, than than the Supreme Court. Um, and Ruth and Ruth, you know. I mean, Ruth Bader Ginsburg didn't like the president anyway because um, he's just not doing what he's supposed to be doing. No. So let let's look up. Um, so let's um, her accomplishments. Ruth Bader. Since we're talking about Ruth Bader Ginsburg today on today's um, edition of Able Run on Air, let's take a look on what she really did. Her accomplishments, um, and this is important. Accomplishments. She was a professor for a while. She did the. <clears throat> she was a professor in Rutgers, and and she came up a uh, professor in Columbia University in New York. So she was, you know, she was teaching law. She did a lot of things, you know. She so according to uh, the National Women's Hall of Fame, because she's listed there, Ginsburg has worked her entire career to eliminate. Gender-based stereotyping, including people with special needs, in legislation and regulations. Appointed Associate Justice by the United States Supreme Court by President William uh, Bill William Clinton in, in 1993. She's the second woman to sit on the bench, and Jewish woman. She's yeah. the first Jewish woman, um, I, um, you know... See, according to television today, or or recently, uh, she was the first wo Jew Jewish woman to be honored um, with her casket in in um, in in um, view, uh, and she was she's part she was part of the United States Supreme Court in its two hundred and twelve year history, um, and according. To the National Women Hall of Fame, and she's listed there. Um, and this is according to the Old Testament words: uh, "Justice, justice shall, uh, justice, justice thou shalt pursue." The Old Testament words. Ruth Bader Ginsburg keeps. She kept on the wall for changes uh, uh, of her chambers. Um, epitomized the outlook of achievement of this distinguished jurist. Ginsburg has worked her entire career to eliminate gender-based stereotyping and legislation uh, of regulations. You know, and she graduated. Um, and of course, we'll have pictures of, of what she. You know, uh, uh, we'll have pictures of her. Uh, she graduated from Cornell University in 1954 with the highest honors in government. Justice Bader Ginsburg attended um, Harvard Law School and Columbia Law School, making the law review <clears throat> in both and graduating at the top of her class of Columbia. Despite these excellent academic credentials, Ginsburg had difficulty finding a job at first and this is according to the movie um, On the Basis of Sex with Felicity Huffman, which uh, really um, goes into the early life of Ginsburg. Um, she had trouble finding a job in the male-dominated society and law profession. She began her career serving clerkship in the United States District Court. And she was honored in 2002 by the Women's Hall of, National Women Hall of Fame. Um, and she started in the appeals court and continued teaching at Rutgers University Law School and then Columbia Law School, where she became the first female tenured professor. Um, in 1980, President Jimmy Carter appointed her to the United States Court of Appeals in the District of Columbia which she served until her 1993 appointment <clears throat> to the Supreme Court. Justice Ginsburg was known 
for her scholarly balanced opinions and foresight personal courage. Her a cancer survivor herself, she has assisted by example of frank discussion by the state uh, um, of her health diagnosis. So, um, yeah, uh, she um, she really did um, extremely um, good works, and she should really be. Um, uh, she should be really remembered for her great accomplishments that she did. Yeah, and like, and the reason why we did the show today in terms of um, disability law is because nobody really knows that. Um, you know, in terms of advocacy, people really have to know what people with special needs really go through uh, when um, for community inclusion for uh, different things that we uh, struggle with. Um, like now, uh, one of the biggest things, and we can talk about this for about nine minutes, one of the biggest things that people with special needs now are going through is appropriate appointment and appropriate, uh, appropriate um, employment and appropriate wages. So let's take a look. Um, Fourteen C, Vermont. This is the biggest law. Um, no, uh, hold on. Um, law and wages disabled. This is the biggest law, and I think. Um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg has a lot to do with helping people too. And in 1986, Section 14C was amended to remove the separation of workshops and work activity centers to eliminate any statutory wage floor for persons with disabilities in certified employment. Um, in theory, such workers were to be paid a wage commensurate to their pro t productivity. So, um, uh, yes, supported employment, according to Dale, uh, Developmental Disability Services Division, uh, DDSD, in partnership with its agencies, and Dale's, because Dale's been on the show before, uh, um, Division of Ro uh, Vocational Rehabilitation has uh, helped individuals in Vermont since 1980s. Um, they uh, basically uh, all these Vermont organizations turn around. Now, figure this: a person with a dis a person with a special need goes into a workshop. What a workshop is, and we have six minutes left, we might go a little bit over here. Uh, a workshop is, um, if you're putting together something, let's say a tape recorder, and you gotta put the different parts together. The person that does it the fastest gets paid the most. That's not fair. Do you think that's fair? No. You know, um, these supportive employment workshops you know, these workshops were paying people $3.25 an hour or less. So why can't a person with a disability get $15, $16, $17 an hour? Um, it, you know what I mean? So Section 14C, most Vermonters heading off to work are unaware that a contentious national debate is brewing over the injustice causing caused by four, Section 14C of the... U.S. Fair Labor and Standards Act, a labor law permitting sub-minimum wage, sometimes less than a dollar per hour be paid to workers with developmental disabilities. I don't want to get paid a dollar an hour. Hell no. That's illegal. Of course. Um, so, 
um, this is not 1800s, to rebate the workers with developmental disabilities um, on the most basic idea of Section 14C is that people with, dis uh, with disabilities are less productive. So their earnings be based on a piece rate in a sheltered workshop isolated from the regular workforce. Mm -hmm. So I think that's wrong. I think they should abolish Section 14C. Um, you know, Section 14C is this uh, this uh, this this perspectively, excuse me, uh, we'll edit that. This perspectively, people are marginalized are marginalized by society, and a poor training option compared <clears throat> is ex to be extensive is in real time job training for real employers. This is why Vermont began closing began closing social workshops over 30 years ago when other states were developing thousands of workshops for their new vocational best practice. Vermont literally st stood alone in, in the nation deciding to create access for workers in Vermont's business community. So let's ponder on that. I don't want to uh, get paid a dollar an hour. It, uh, I mean, this is just ridiculous. So, um, in terms of that, I think um, it's best that um, 14C gets ab abolished. And um, I, I think in my journalistic opinion and my wife's journalistic opinion, people with special needs uh, deserve a regular wage. It doesn't matter how smart you are, you know, what's your IQ, if you went to college, if you went to school, or what have you. Um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg did extremely well for people with special needs. Let's keep her legacy alive and, and, and um, stop, uh, stop people from... Uh, from 14C or, or any other f situation that keeps people with special needs from working. This journalist has been uh, working in the field for 25 plus years in the field of uh, special needs and ability journalism, and we're, we're going to keep it up. We're going to keep um, Abled and on Air alive. Um, anything you want to say before we end? I would say, uh Maybe we'll get a bit of her remember that she she was a remarkable woman who did a lot of stuff and and she's from Brooklyn. Remember that. She's from Brooklyn. <laughs> huh? Um yeah, we're gonna have pictures of Ruth Betty um Ginsburg. I know she was a tough woman Before she, before we end the show, um I wanna I send my condolences to her family and mm -hmm. say that she was a remarkable person. Okay, before we end the show, um, two things. Uh, much condolences to the Ruth uh, Bader Ginsburg family, the uh, Supreme Court justices, and everybody in Washington mourning her loss. And also, um, before we end, I know you only have a little bit to go. Uh, recently, um, I used to work, well, I used to work for a place called BronxNet Television. Um, in the Bronx, which was part of Cablevision. Bronx the Television was a television uh, station um, similar to Orca Media, which is a public access TV station within uh, the auspices of the Bronx, uh, Lehman, Colleges, uh, 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 Lehman College, and, and many other places that BronxNet um, uh, you know, was working out of. Uh, recently, there was a gentleman by the name of um, uh, you know, we don't have a picture of him, but recently there was a gentleman by the name of Jeremy Hutchins who worked uh, as one of our field coordinators at BronxNet Television and many other positions as he um, started as an intern and worked his way up. Unfortunately, Jeremy Hutchins um, had passed away at the age of 36, 
And uh, we just want to wish his family, if his family is watching this um, program right now, um, you know, many condolences to the Hutchins family. Um, Jeremy has worked his way up from BronxNet. He worked for BET's 106 and Park and many other um, things. He did movies and other productions. We want to um, send our condolences. Abled and On Air wishes to send its condolences to the Hutchins family. And with that said, uh, um, this puts an end to this edition of Abled and On Air. We would like to thank our sponsors, uh, sponsors Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, Anchor FM, Spotify, and many others. Please uh, listen to our podcast on Anchor FM and Spotify as well. This puts an end to this edition of Ableton on Air. I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Arlene Seiler. See you next time. Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Green Mountain Support Services of Vermont, Washington County Mental Health, Al Air Israel. Food sponsors for Ableton On Air include Geffen Foods Israel, Osem Foods Israel. Major media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify.